welcome i am abhish kumar mishra today we are going to talk about integrating language skills friends as we know in our mother tongue when we communicate we do not use only one skill we always use one more than two skills all the time for example when we are talking to somebody you are listening to what the other person is telling you and then only you reply so we involve the two skills listening and speaking similarly it's possible that when we are talking to someone on the telephone then we listen and speak and sometimes we also write down a message that the other person is conveying and at times we read over what we have written transferring language from one medium to another is itself a skill think of dictation as a skill we have to convert the spoken word accurately into written language there are many situations in which we use more than one language skill and the purpose of integrating four skills is to enhance the students communicative competence that means they don't only have to remain the receptor or the person who is engaged in language learning passively rather the students have to communicate as well so the students build new knowledge and skills on to what they already know and can do if we integrate the various language skills in classroom if students are able to read a short story this skill will help them to write their own story in the same way if they can understand a dialogue about buying things in a shop they can use this as a model for practicing their own speaking skills in a similar situation integrating the skills also allows you to build in more activity more variety into the lesson because the range of activities will be wider instead of just having listening the students can have speaking reading and writing practice at the same time integrating the skills means that you are working at the level of realistic communication not just at the level of vocabulary and sentence patterns integrating the four skills emphasizes the focus on realistic language and can therefore lead to the students all round development of communicative competence in english or another second language let's look at this example of simple integration the easiest form of integration is within the same medium that is either oral or written from receptive to productive skills so if you have oral medium receptive skill will be listening and the productive skill will be speaking if the written medium is used then the receptive skill will be reading and the productive skill will be writing in other words we would use a listening text as a model for the students speaking and a reading text as a model for the students writing so the reading passage on the topic of introducing oneself can serve as a model for the students own writing for example if you have this uh, passage my name is anvesha i live at avhanagar not far from the center of the city i have lived there since 2002 i go to central school number 2 i have been a student there for nearly 3 years now write yourself about something in the same way this involves constructing a series of activities that use a variety of skills in each of the activities there is realistic communicative use of language for example look at this sequence of activities reading activity a menu giving information about food in a restaurant oral activity students make up a dialogue between the waiter and a person who wants to eat lunch in the restaurant writing activity students write letters to friends based on their partner's information notice how one activity is closely linked thematically to the next the information that the students get from the reading is useful in the oral activity while the writing activity is based on information from the oral activity now let's take another example look now 
The reading comprehension exercise also serves as the basis for an oral activity. So I have given an example of the classroom bank. This is uh, an artificial uh, situation and uh, text is there. Every Tuesday, Anita goes to work in a bank. She knows all her customers very well because they are her classmates. In fact, Anita and her customers are all 10 years old. Anita's bank is in a primary school in Dumka. The bank is a branch of a national bank, but the children run it themselves. It is open for 30 minutes a week. During the mathematics lesson on Tuesday morning, Anita opens the bank. Her classmates deposit or withdraw money from their savings account. The bank pays interest on their savings. The idea for the bank came from the mathematics teacher, Mr. Murmu. He took his idea to the national bank. The bank agreed to his plan. Our bank reaches the children our bank teaches the children how to take care of their money, said Mr. Murmu. The bank is popular with the children. Anita said that it was a fun way to learn something very useful. Now, suppose a newspaper reporter is coming and he or she is going to interview Anita. Complete the following dialogue using the information from the passage. So I have given the sample. The reporter asks, how old are you, Anita? Anita has to reply something. Reporter, great, does the bank belong to the school and so on. So Anita has to construct her own sentences, understand what she is being asked and reply accordingly in English. Now interview your classmates and find out what they think about the classroom bank. Ask them to give reasons. The fill in the blanks activity that the students are asked to carry out in completing the dialogue above is actually a form of reading comprehension. As the comprehension questions take the form of a realistic dialogue, the students can then practice their oral skills as well as their reading skills. The dialogue can then be used as a basis for the students' own conversations in which they discuss the idea of a school bank. Oral language tends to be less structured than written text. But there are some discourse features that we can teach our students. Look at this conversation as an example. Tourist, excuse me, do you speak English? Sarita, yes, a little. Tourist, oh good, can you tell me the way to Nongrim Hills please? Sarita, Nongrim Hills, yes, go down this road. Tourist, yes. Sarita, then turn right after the park, that's Nongrim Hills. Tourist, I see. Can I go, to, go on foot? Sarita, yes, it's not very far. About 10 minutes, I think. Tourist, okay. Thank you very much for your help. Sarita, welcome. Goodbye. Tourist replies, goodbye. Look at the conversation's organization. The tourist opens the conversation, asks questions about the way, and listens carefully to Sarita's directions, and then closes the conversation. Typical vocabulary items would include Opening, excuse me, asking the way, please, can you tell me the way to dash dash dash, can I go on or buy dash dash dash, that means the, she has to fill something, giving directions, go down this road, turn right after the park, listening carefully, yes, I see, okay, closing, thank you very much for your help, goodbye. So what we saw here, that conversation leads to listening understanding, comprehension, and then also talking. Let's take another example of simple integration. For simple integration, we can design a listening or reading comprehension activity that becomes a plan for speaking or writing. First example, read the short story. I have given the story next, The Road to Heaven, about a silly mistake. The comprehension activity could focus on the main discourse features of the short story. Answer these questions about the short story. Who are the main characters? Where does the story take place? What happened first? What happened in the end? What was the silly mistake? And so on. And this is the story. We can read it later. Now, plan your own story about the silly mistake. Use the questions to help you. For complex integration, it could mean making changes to the activities in the textbook. 
Imagine there is a reading passage about a visit to a zoo, which is followed by these comprehension questions. Where did the children go today? What did they see there? Which part did Anu like best? What did Anu think about the visit? This activity could be changed into a fill in the blanks dialogue between Anu and her mother, similar to the dialogue that we had on the previous uh, pages, or a fill in the blanks entry in Anu's diary. Now let's take another example where we integrate reading with writing. So this is a reading passage about weather. Read it carefully. We'll have a pleasant morning with clear sky. The day will not be as hot as yesterday. Yesterday we had a maximum temperature of 40 degree, 44 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 37 degrees Celsius. There are some light rain clouds over the south. By late afternoon, we'll see the rain. Unfortunately, for all of us, it is going to be a humid day with a maximum temperature of 39 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. The monsoon is expected to arrive in two or three days. Now, you can ask oral questions on the basis of that. When is it going to rain today? What's the difference between the maximum temperatures of yesterday and today? What kind of weather will we have in the morning? Why would we feel unfortunate? When is monsoon expected? And so on. Now, you can provide a model sentence and then elicit some from the students. For example, you can ask, look at this picture. What's the weather like? Students may reply, rainy. Teacher, that is you. Very good. It is rainy. When it is rainy, I feel sad. How do you feel when it rains? Students have to reply. You can ask them, I like snowy weather. What kind of weather do you like? Then again, the students have to understand what you have said and reply. Writing a letter. Ask students to write a letter to a friend using the following writing points. Your favorite weather, how the weather makes you feel, ask your friend a question about her favorite weather, etc. You can provide the students some guidance in the form of a controlled writing activity. As you can see in this activity here, the guiding uh, points are there. Students, you can engage the students in vocabulary learning activity. For example, you can ask them, give this chart and ask them to find the words and words can appear diagonally, horizontally or vertically and the words will be related to the weather. One is done for you, the last one which is in red, the forecast. Let's take another example, reading with speaking or writing activity. Look at the map given below, paying attention to the various places mentioned in it. Suppose your friend gets down at Super Bazaar bus stop, how would you guide him to your house? Imagine that your house is located near statesman building. So the students have to look at the map, read it carefully and then supply the answer. They have to write few sentences there or if you are doing this exercise orally, then they have to reply orally. You can use another map, it can be a simple map. Now let's talk about complex integration. Before the students start reading or listening to the tale, they should be engaged in some warm-up activities. So I'm going to show you a folk tale. Based on that, we'll conduct these activities. Put pictures of some animals in the classroom and have the students say their names. This is only a sample story. You can conduct some activities, same activities with your own folk tales. You can also ask them to describe what animals are found in a zoo, on land, in water, in a desert. Which animal can swim or run or fast, run fast or fly? How many legs the animal has? Which animals have tails and so on? Describe animals orally and ask the students to point to the correct picture. Some sample descriptions are given below. So descriptions, it has a wide wings, hangs upside down on a tree, becomes active at night. Answer would be bat. It has four legs, very big ears and a long trunk. Answer is elephant. It has black and white stripes, zebra. 
It has no hands or legs and is long and slender. Snake. This is the story that I have used for certain activities. The stag and the snail. You can read it when you have time. So this is a folk tale taken from the Khasi language spoken in Meghalaya. Now let's see what activities we can conduct based on this particular folk tale. Activity 1. Focus on listening and speaking skills. After you have read the story to the students, you should use pictures, appropriate intonation and gestures. It would be better if while telling the story, you explain the difficult words, preferably by using the gestures and asking the students to guess the meaning. After telling the story, ask them some questions orally to see whether they were able to identify the main characters, their characteristics, the key points or the main ideas, etc. or not. Thus, you can develop and also assess at the same time the student's listening comprehension and speaking skill. So, activity 2 will be focused on the reading skill. Now, have the students read the tale in pairs and retell each part to one another. Give them some comprehension questions and assess their reading comprehension. For example, who was very proud of himself? Why did the snail feel insulted? Why, did, why didn't all the animals like the stag? Who did the snail ask to have a race with him? Did the stag accept the challenge? Who did, who hid under the grass? Who won the race? Why did the snail feel sad? And so on. Third activity on this tale will be focus on listening, reading and speaking skills. Another activity called story strip activity can be done to teach and or assess three skills, namely listening, speaking and reading at the same time. The steps of the story strip activity are as follows. Divide the class into six groups since there are six paragraphs in the story. You can divide the class into maybe three or four groups or seven or eight groups depending on the number of students and the length of the story that you have chosen. Make strips of, strips of sentences of each of the paragraphs. I have done one for you. The first paragraph of the folk tale that we had. Now give each group the strips for one paragraph of the story, making sure that the students are not given the strips in order. The students in each group will arrange the strips into the correct order. Each student in a group takes a strip. Each student reads the sentence on a strip aloud while others listen to her in turn. No student is allowed to look at each other's strips. After listening to all the strips, each group puts the strips in correct order to make one complete paragraph. After all the groups have arranged their paragraphs, the class decides the correct order of the paragraphs and makes up the whole story. Next activity will be focus on writing skill. In order to develop and also assess the writing skill, you can ask the students to write a short story or a play about stag and snail or a conversation between the two animals or a letter to a friend describing what their visit, uh, what uh, was their visit to a zoo like. The students should be encouraged to work in pairs to write sentences spoken by stag or snail according to their part of the story. You can also engage them in writing a letter. Ask students to write a letter to a friend using the following writing points. Your favorite animal. Why do you like it? How is it useful? Ask your friend a question about her favorite animal, etc. You can provide the students some guidance in the form of a controlled writing activity such as given here. Next activity will be focus on listening and speaking skills. The students can go on a field trip to a zoo or you can prepare a virtual zoo by placing pictures of animals in cages in the classroom. The students pretending to be on a trip to a zoo, will look at the various animals. After the trip, ask them to describe what they did see and do at the zoo. The students can write and or make an oral presentation. They can also engage themselves in role plays. An example of such a role play is given below. So this is the virtual zoo 
that I have uh, drawn for you. You can uh, have big pictures on uh, the blackboard or on the wall of your classroom. Next activity, speaking skill. This conversation or a dialogue role play is based on what we saw in the virtual zoo. You can have some other conversation done. You can have a different kind of role play ba based on this virtual zoo. Or if you have chosen another activity, say some other, other set of pictures, you can have a different, say like a situation in a restaurant or buying clothes or going to buy shoe in a shop. So you can have various uh, themes and then the role plays based on those themes. I have given one sample example for you on the basis of the virtual zoo that we had. You can read this and uh, see. So what uh, I have uh, talked about is that it's better, especially in a second language classroom, that we do not always use a single skill. It is good to have the students engaged in various skills at the same time. So even if in your textbook there is a lesson, it should not be only based on the comprehension questions. You should not focus only on asking comprehension questions and making uh, some translations of some difficult words or have a memorization exercise of some grammar activity. What you should do is that take one story, one text from textbook and devise various activities where integration of the skills are there. So writing with reading, writing with listening, speaking and reading all the four skills at the same time and so on. If you try it, it's not difficult. And remember that in mother tongue, the students already know the language. So, and they, they can listen to others speak and they can understand. They have already mastered the language, a great part of it, the vocabulary, the grammar. So they won't have difficulty in speaking, in making sentences, in understanding what someone is telling her. When she listens to a song or a text, uh, an oral text and so on. But in second language, what happens? The children don't have access to any, uh, say, uh, spoken uh, language outside the classroom. So that's why we need to have integration of all the skills where the students, especially who are there to learn the second language, will get chance to use all the skills and then develop proficiency. They become proficient in a second language. That's all for today about this topic. Thank you.